Okay. So I'll start on this slide with just an overview of the work, and then in whatever time remains, I'll go into a little more detail than on this slide. Okay. So this talk is about reinforcement learning, and um, in general, this is a field that I think holds enormous potential. But if we're going to build reliable and principled RL, we need to pull back from some of the complex engineering we do and carefully build up the foundations of what we're working on. Okay, so in this work, we are going to look at one of the fundamental building blocks of RL, which is the problem of estimating the value function corresponding to uh, a fixed policy. Okay, and we'll focus on the case where we're estimating a linearly parameterized value function rather than, say, something with a neural network. Right. The algorithm that is most widely used for this is temporal difference learning, which is a simple iterative scheme that aims to, in each step, reduce the Bellman error. Okay. And while this algorithm is really simple to implement, a theoretical analysis of TD has uh, been pretty subtle, okay, and there's, it's pretty limited. Okay, so our contribution is to look at the updates made by TD and uncover that they act enough like gradients of a particular value function loss so that we can give a really simple SGD style analysis of TD. Okay. Now, from this, you inherit the things that I really like about SGD analyses. So you get explicit, transparent bounds uh, in finite time. Okay. And simple proofs tend to generalize better. Okay. So we managed to extend this proof uh, beyond sort of the IED setting where you usually analyze SGD to the case where your observations come streaming from a Markov chain. Uh, to versions of TD that use eligibility traces, known as TD lambda, uh, and to Q learning applied to uh, a particular class of high dimensional optimal stopping problems. Okay. Moving forward, uh, the problem is this, and I'll just tell you this through a, a toy example. So before Atari, uh, people often built RL systems for Tetris. Okay, games of games. All right. Now, let's imagine that someone has written uh, an algorithm for playing Tetris, and now I'm just watching that algorithm play Tetris. Okay. I'd like to build a value predictor, so something that looks at a board configuration and predicts the cumulative discounted reward to go from that board configuration on. Okay. Now, for Tetris, we can come up with decent handcrafted features. Things like the heights of the columns, the differences between the heights of the columns, the maximum of the heights of the columns. Okay. And I could think of predicting the discounted reward to go as some linear combination of those features. Okay. Now, you can see why doing this would be helpful from a control perspective as well. Once I understand which board configurations are better than others, I could immediately use that to improve my policy, right? to make decisions that are good not just right now, but lead to effective control into the future. Okay. TD is the following simple scheme for coming up with those estimates. Uh, I, at time t, observe my current state, the reward I've received, and the next state. I form from that an updated value prediction, this thing yt, which is the reward plus the, my estimate of the discounted reward to go into the future. Okay. Now, I'm going to say that by Bellman's equation, that should be about equal on average, to the value prediction I have from state to my current state. Okay, And so what I do is I just try to break 
my prediction at the state st and bring that closer to yt. So I take a gradient step of a loss that is the square distance between my prediction at st and my updated prediction. Cosmetically, there's something like SGD going on here, but yt also implicitly depends on theta t. So this process is circular in a way. So does this circular thing even converge? Uh, a lot of this was clarified uh, over 20 years ago by Tsitsiklis and Van Roy by interpreting this as uh, solving a fixed point equation. And convergence is integrally tied to contraction properties that hold under certain settings and not under others. And that seems to clarify when this converges. Okay. And in particular, it does converge for that tetra story I just told you. Okay. And it converges to a projected version, the solution of a projected version of Bellman's equation. Okay. Now, I think that is great, but at the same time, we should push further than that in, in sort of the years after this to wonder if we converge to this point, do we get there efficiently with, efficient, with a small amount of computational effort and with a small number of samples? Okay. And sort of until some very recent work, also in uh, 2018, uh, this is very limited. Okay. So I'll flash up one. Uh, example of the kind of bound we prove that uh, is uh, specialized to a case where the samples are drawn IID from a stationary distribution. Okay, So this is a model that most aligns with the setup of SGD analyses. Okay. And we can give bounds like this. So one example of a bound we have in the paper applies with iterative averaging and robust problem-independent step sizes. And the bound looks pretty much like what you'd get from a textbook uh, analysis of SGD, but scaled up by a discount factor, reflecting that we're not really taking gradient steps. Okay. Now, in carrying out this analysis, we develop a couple key insights that might be uh, interesting beyond these bounds. So one is a sense in which TD updates act enough like gradients of this particular value function loss. And in particular, this means that the TD update at each step is going to point, uh, make a positive angle with the direction toward the TD limit point. So we move consistently in that direction. Okay. And the second key insight is a technique for dealing with uh, noise that is Markovian rather than IID. Okay. And the key challenge there is that gradient steps are then not just noisy, they can be heavily biased. Because okay. the parameter at which I'm evaluating my gradient is a function of the recent past, which is uh, strongly correlated with the next observation I get. Okay. So the key here. Uh, studying projected TD on uniformly mixing Markov chains, we give some kind of information theoretic technique to control the bias of the gradients in that case. And the key thing is that the bias of the gradient uh, is going to really act like a noise term. It effectively scales the noise in the problem by the mixing time of the Markov chain, giving you sort of the kinds of results you'd expect. Okay. And I'll close there. Thanks. Okay, questions? Yeah, so I think that it uh, does not use explicitly the linear recursion in those matrices. Um, so I think there's a lot of transparency gained by just using uh, 
the exact existing SGD proof. Um, in addition, it scales to something like this Q learning problem where the updates are actually nonlinear. I don't know if this works. 